Welcome to the Sowing Hope Podcast. This is a show all about implanting hope in our hearts. I'm Bill Snyder, joined by my friend Anne DeSantis. We're glad you're here for our uplifting conversation about faith and how it sustains our hearts through all the seasons of life. Thanks for walking with us. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special episode of Sowing Hope. I am Bill Snyder, and as you can see, I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Ann DeSantis. And Ann, how are you? And Merry Christmas. Uh, it is the Christmas season, so Merry Christmas. How are you? Oh, great. I mean, honestly, this is probably my favorite time of the year. It One is. of my favorite times, but <laughs> how can we not like the Christmas season as Catholics? I know, right? Yeah, it's so For us, Christmas begins December 25th. Fifth, exactly. And it keeps yeah, we're going. So exactly, yeah. Everybody, everybody looks at us funny because we keep wishing them Merry Christmas through January, but uh, it's all good, right? And um, we're ex- we're excited today because we have a wonderful guest. I'd love for you to tell us about her. Yes, I am so excited that we have Nicole Abyssinia with us, and she is a Catholic evangelist. She is an actress, producer, writer. She has just done so much, and we're extremely excited to host her on Sewing Hope. I'm also personally excited because she's going to be a guest on my show, Journeys in Faith with Anne DeSantis on the Ministry Network. So that's also something to look forward to as well. It is. Nicole, welcome. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much. I'm glad that I actually get to see you guys face to face. That's right. It's it's online, but right, it's when you can see someone visually, it's still almost as the next best thing, isn't it? I know you know that as a producer. (laughs) <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Now your bio is just extensive, but a question that I would just love to ask you is what is your background, both regarding your faith journey and your journey in the film business? Sure. And those two intersect in parallel and go all over the map. Um, so I think the most important one of course is, is my faith journey. Um, so and it's a very long story. I'll try and summarize it as much as I can. But um, basically, you know, I, I grew up without m- much faith from the time I was um, eight or nine years old. After that, never went to church, never did anything. I did have a base, but there was always a huge friction and a really big battle. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, I came from a very rough background where um, my father had actually tried to murder my mother and I. Um right when I was, um, well, before I was born, actually, and I was supposed to be aborted. And then after my mom went and took me and put me into hiding, and she was dying from that, what had happened to her. And um, she ended up converting to Catholicism, which was an amazing thing, like she was dying, and then and then had this huge experience. Um, My mom was raised Jewish, but like, not really Jewish, just kind of, you know, New York Jewish, um, that isn't really practicing, we would say. But in any case, when my mom did convert, there was a huge friction in my family. I remember when I was very young because my mom put me into Catholic school and she took me to Catholic church and my grandparents were devastated and there was a big battle over Jesus. It was always this huge thing. And I I just remember thinking, why does it matter? Like, why can't we all just get along type of thing? I didn't understand what was happening. And I had been brought to the temple and brought to you know, it was just very confusing. But um, in my Catholic school, I had a, a very sad experience that happened that pushed me out completely away from God in every n- manner possible. Um, I still believed in God. I believe that there was one. I actually believed that Jesus existed. I just didn't think that 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 he cared about me. And I thought that I was on my own and I was going to have to take care of myself and those around me. And that was kind of like this wall, like the very beginning of this wall that built between God and I. Um, but then fast forward many, many years later when Hollywood, um, and I'll, I'll get to that, but you know, my whole life, all I wanted to do was be in the film industry. That was just everything to me. And so what happened is that became my God. That was what I looked to. That was what I wanted to be. That was, you know, if they told me to do something, I wanted to go in that direction. I listened to them in a lot of those ways. And so that was my guide. 
And um, they all intersected on the red carpet um, in 2009 at a Woody Allen premiere at the Cannes Film Festival in this handmade gown where I'm standing on the red carpet, you know, feeling like I had finally arrived because I'd been fighting to be in the business for so long. And I had an out of body experience. And I would say it was the first time that I, what I didn't know at the time, but it was the Holy Spirit coming upon me and convicting my heart, my soul, just everything within me that what I was doing was wrong, that everything I was part of was wrong, that the world had lied to me. It was this unbelievable fold in the matrix, so to speak. And um, I remember I went to the the restroom to collect myself and there was no one staring back at me in the mirror. It was just absolute emptiness at the height of my career at that time and the time that should have been the most exciting. I was actually the absolute most miserable. And I literally ran out of France, like in a movie looking for a church. And that was the beginning of my faith journey to wow. Catholicism. That is just incredible. Isn't it, Bill? I mean, your story. And admittedly, I believe I interviewed you once before. I think Bill and I interviewed you one time before. So I recall the Woody Allen story and, uh, Thank you for sharing because, you know, every time somebody listens to our podcast, we get a lot of new people that didn't hear, they weren't able to hear your story before. So thank you for sharing that. Now, I know that you're in the middle of making another film, and I was wondering if you could share with us um, what was the making of the series, the series that you're doing right now? What is that like compared to some of the other films that you've done over the last, say, 15 years or so? Um, I think it's one of the best things that I've ever had the opportunity by God to do. And I also think it's, it's potentially the hardest that I've ever um, been part of. Um, we really wanted to, I wanted to make a TV series. It had been brought to me, the idea of it had been brought to me about oh, maybe 12 or 13 years ago. I don't even think I was, it was like right before I was Christian and it was about, you know, fighting child abuse and fighting child predators. And I, I got the, they gave me the idea and I thought, wow, the world's not ready for this yet. And at the time, it, it's called The Advocate. At the time, it was called something else. Um, but The Advocate is so great because it's the Holy Spirit. And it's also this lead character being the advocate. She's a child abuse investigator. And basically, she's with a teen at the beginning of, of the pilot. She's with a teen on a bridge, you know, trying to encourage him. He ends up jumping off the bridge to commit suicide she goes in after him and uh almost dies ends up coming out of the water with these holy spirit gifts so oh, once she has these gifts of you know visions dreams discernment um she's able to get one step ahead of the predators but of course it's that typical with i think any of our faith journeys you know you kind of don't know what it is and you don't know what you have and you're kind of trying to figure it out and you're falling and you're like messing up and, you know, and you also feel like you're a weirdo and then you learn it. So I think um, a lot of people uh, in the faith will, will really appreciate this show and it shares a lot of the Catholic mysticism in it. Yeah. You know, that's so beautiful. Um, we, we're so Holy Spirit driven here at Patchwork Art Ministry, I think. And even, you know, I know Anne is too, and I know uh, Fiat Ministry Network. I mean, the Holy Spirit just brings people together. And that is an amazing, amazing thing. Uh, I would love for you to talk a little bit as well about some of the Catholic highlights of the show um, as well, because, um, you know, obviously you bringing in, you just mentioned the Holy Spirit and, and you know, something that might be foreign to some people, some some uh, charismatic, some charisms of the Holy Spirit that are, um, you know, brought through, um, you know, onto film uh, through this. So maybe just touch a little bit on some of the Catholic highlights of the show. Sure. And and that's what I'm so excited about, too, because when I originally got the show, you always see these TV shows that kind of have supernatural gifts, but they're kind of the psychic ability or they're, you know, this or that. We don't know where they come from. But this is so clearly, you know, gifts from God and trying to operate in the spirit, which are which are real gifts and to be able to discern the difference. But you know, it's so hard to make something Catholic that has like Catholic themes in it because the majority of the the faith side of of Hollywood is um, more on the Protestant side. And so when it comes to Catholic things, they usually get taken out or left out. And it's a big point. We were grateful literally by a miracle. And I waited this time. I was like, I we need to have Catholic investors. It has to be Catholic because they have to understand, you know, when I want to share these things and the importance of them. And so even just having a statue of Our Lady, 
You know what I mean? Just honoring her or her journey in the show. Um, The other thing I'm very excited about is there's a priest character that is one of the recurring lead characters, and he's a spiritual director, which I don't think has ever been in a show literally ever or a movie where, you know, he's just a great young uh, charismatic priest and he's just trying to support her in learning these gifts and in just being a really holy example of a, of a, a pure man. That's a priest, a safe space for her. So that's exciting too. Yeah. Lots of fun stuff. Oh my gosh. I love that. I love the incorporation of, you said the blessed mother and just, you know, the Catholic presence on set, on set and the way that it's being written and the spiritual director, I, you're right. I don't think I've ever heard of any movie or TV series that mentions anything like a spiritual director. Mm-hmm. So how creative is that? Um, now, I know your, sh- your show is inspired by true events. Where did you get the stories for these episodes? Sure. So, you know, the idea was that there was a like a kind of superhero girl that protected kids but what it morphed into was you know sitting down with the especially with everything going on and the increase in human trafficking which has become extremely important to me and i've poured two years into it uh with much more opposition than i ever expected you know we sat with human trafficking units um at the police departments we sat with um not not for profits that help and intercede in different ways uh, whether it's rescue missions or afterwards taking care of trafficking victims um but really digging into to that um that path and then pulling those stories obviously in a very careful way and kind of merging stories together and things so that we didn't you know take anybody's identity um but we're not trafficking is a very very important issue that is a through line throughout the show but the show itself is about protecting the vulnerable in society which i also think is really important to the catholic uh communities which is you know we protect the elderly there's an episode about elder abuse which isn't really talked about much there's an episode the first episode is somewhat hard hitting it starts it starts tougher and then it lightens and lightens and becomes more hopeful and more joyful along the way within this journey it's kind of like a queen's gambit just in the sense that it's the story of more the progression of the life but the reason why i started with the child abuse the small child abuse episode was because that was my true story of what happened in my school when i when i first started and what pushed me away but then all the amazing things that can come from that and that we can have a voice and that god never leaves us and all of these hopeful hopeful things so so, yeah, I'm really, really um, excited to tell all of that. And, um, you know, hopefully many families will be protected. In January, we're actually releasing a tip sheet um, and we will have probably more of those. But the tip sheet's basically something parents could just put on their fridge. Kids could download on their on their laptop, which is just very simple tips that we learned through this year of investigations that if kids did this, teens, young adults, families, mothers, that they could literally save their own child or a kid in their neighborhood or themselves. Yeah. Human trafficking is one of those difficult subjects uh, to really delve into. Right. And, and it approaching it the way you are from a faith-based perspective and that God can do all things and, you know, be the true rescuer rescuer through other people i just find so profound and beautiful uh that that you really have taken this and you know very very difficult topic and and put it in um the light in a very unique way you you know you never want to say this you know this type of thing is easy to be talking about but this gives it a um a a context that helps people understand it and as you just mentioned uh that that tip sheet can help save other you know people and that and that's amazing um so can you just tell us a little bit about you know the fact that you wrote produced directed and then starred in this show what is that like i mean there's so many different hats you're you're wearing um you know are there any are there any favorite parts of uh, of of this process for you what i've learned is whatever god wants is what is going to be and what's going to happen. Cause that was never the plan for this show. And I, I've worn multiple hats before, but I have not worn this many hats in a project before. And basically I was just producing the show. That was the plan. And then we had submitted a script 
they brought in a writer for it and the studio didn't care for that script and we almost lost the deal of of being able to do the you know to partner and I said well hold on don't like just wait you love the concept let me go write something let me write a pilot and I'll, I'll bring it back to you and then they love that and they and I said okay well I guess I'm doing this. Oh, that's good. But when I wrote all the episodes, I actually brought in a great uh, co-writer, um, Tara Stone, who cleaned up all my stuff and, and made it even better and, and added in wonderful things. And Tara is actually a wonderful, I, I was like, it has to be a Catholic if I bring somebody in to see the work that I did on these episodes and to be able to understand what she's on and what she's writing. And, you know, she, I kind of, when I write, I, I have all the scenes, but they're literally all over and somebody comes and helps me, you know, where things go because I just write in the adoration chapel and I just like write what God tells me to but then it's not always pieced in order we have to re replace it but um so Tara did an amazing job and she was she's a Catholic consecrated she's a consecrated virgin I thought oh she'll get it this is this is wonderful so um so having her with me was great um and then directing came because did that happen and it, that's another story. But the the craziest thing was I hired four actresses for this role out of a 63 person cast and every single actress fell out. Not all the other 63. It was just the two leads that this was happening with. And literally 2 a.m. before we started shooting, the last actress called me and she's like, I can't come. I can't make it. I can't come from Atlanta. Literally like four hours before we started filming. And I, I said, and they said, you're going to have to shut down the show. And I said, no, I'm going to sleep for two hours and then I will get up and do it myself. <laughs> and that was, that was how it happened, you know, because God had ordained it. No one else could. Mm -hmm. And then I get there thinking, oh, I have to tell everybody that I'm doing the role now. And then when I said it, everyone thought, everyone said, we thought you were. We didn't know oh. you weren't. <laughs> we thought it was you. <laughs> so it was oh. very very, very funny times. And I was thankful for the support and the people that rallied around me, which we never would have made it through. We just couldn't have without, you know, you're only as good as the people standing next to you. Mm. And of course, only what God has ordained, really. That's right. Such a good point that everything is Holy Spirit ordained, isn't it? God has a plan that maybe we just have to figure out as we go along. So I think that is so cool. Thanks for sharing. How about sharing with us, if you would, the whole idea to do this, where did that come from? You know, it must it must have come from when you were in the Adoration Chapel, one of those times or in prayer. It was so Jim Coleman, who I've known for 20 years, we actually met working together on the set of do you know him from you're, you're shaking your head. Everybody knows Jim Coleman. So I have known Jim for 20 years. And I actually fought for him. And when I was doing casting, I was casting for Tolton the the priest the um the from slave to priest and i thought no one else can do this role but jim and you know sure enough they they real they prayed and they they ended up casting he's doing an amazing job with that show all over the country but that idea came from him like i said 12 or 15 years ago when we were sitting in a a burger joint on the upper west side in new york city when we were both actors but neither of us were living christian anything and so for it to come, like God had to bring us on our journeys before we could make this show properly. So I have to give Jim great credit because he has these great original ideas that then, you know, I can run with. But that that original thought was his. Now, a lot of the true stories also came from my mom, who was a detective my whole life. Um, she was a detective. Uh, she ended up actually up until her passing last year, she was um, literally bounty hunting. So mm -hmm. I get to kind of play her in a, there are certain scenes where it's literally just playing her because I took some of her stories and things that I grew up with. So it was very amazing and a blessing to dig into that character and mm -hmm. and her people loved my mom. Yeah. Well, wow. first of all, I want to say on behalf of both Bill and I and Patchwork Heart Ministry that we are uh, so sorry about the passing of your mom. Yeah. But obviously what you're doing right now i'm sure that somehow some way you know your mom is praying for you she's praying for this mission that you have because your mom from what i think you shared she was a person of faith at at some point right yeah you know what she when i came back and and got 
uh, I didn't talk too much of my story because it's it's longer than 30 minutes. But when I be I first became Protestant after that, and it was actually I ended up getting extraordinarily ill from what they were some devil worshipers were doing to me in Hollywood. And I was actually dying. And it was through the experience of dying, which, like I said, like, how long do we have? We'll have to do a whole. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Just to talk about that. But but that experience um, through that time that I was dying and the uh, I became devoutly Catholic at that time. And then my mom joined me on that journey when I was sick. We would be doing, you know, daily rosaries together. And she started going to daily mass with me. And um, so she really like I know she's in heaven. And that was part of the journey. But the most amazing thing, like we had so many struggles. Like I said, this was the hardest thing. I The show, it wasn't just wearing all the hats. I had no many people no idea how many people are actually against the fight for human trafficking. I thought everybody would be for us and they weren't. And at first I thought, is this because we're Catholic? But it, it really wasn't. It was more that we were fighting uh, for children, which I found extremely shocking. But my mom got the news. She was fine. Uh, She got the news that she had six weeks to live literally a week or two before we started filming. And I had talked, I didn't tell the majority of people, um, but we talked about it. And my, and I was like, you know, we can shut down the show. Everybody was already in town. I mean, it was, it was on, you can't just, I mean, it's on, it's like hundred people that are already slated for this in from all over the country. Um, my mom said, no, like, I don't want you, like, even though, even if I have six weeks to live, as they say, you know, whatever, like you make the show. And we made a very difficult decision to not shut down and to to not stop because my mom fought for the underdog and fought for children her whole life. Like that was all she cared about, especially after what she went through with my father was it was always about fighting for others and helping others and helping the vulnerable. And so it was such a it ended up being such a tribute to her. And you know what? God blessed it because I went to her side as soon as it was as soon as we stopped filming and God gave me double the time. So instead of that six weeks, I got another 12 weeks with her where I just got to be with her and take care of her. So God didn't like we did what God asked and, and we honored that. And then he gave it back to us double portion. Oh, wow. I'm excited to think about doing another podcast with you like this. I know you're going to be on Journeys in Faith and we will probably talk about the you know, we'll repeat some of it because it might be a different <laughs> audience. Right. But Sure. We'll have to delve in a little bit there too. Um, as we're starting to come a little closer to the end, you know, there's people watching this podcast right now that might be able to help at your mission. And so I just wondered what would some of those things be that those our, our audience might be able to do to help your mission? And where can they watch and subscribe to the series? Well, and that would mean so much to us. So the number one thing we could do for the advocate and for, you know, uh, Catholic themed shows is to support them by watching them. Um, it's premiering as of Christmas Eve, which is a God nod right there. Um, it'll be out all through January's Human Trafficking Month, but it premieres 12-24 on Pure Flix. Pure Flix um, has almost a million subscribers already. I'm surprised more Catholics don't know about it because it's the clean Netflix. It's basically all clean, Catholic-friendly content. Um, I would say, you know, more Protestants watch it, but there, I mean, that's the way to go. There's no cursing. There's no sexual content. So please watch our show, The Advocate. You can get a seven day free trial. You can download the app on Roku. You can, um, just go to pureflix.com, um, or you could download the app on your phone. It's very easy to watch and free seven days. If you just want to binge the series and, um, or, you know, you can stay as a subscriber. Um, the second way to help is we always need prayers, you know, please pray for open hearts and open minds, you know, to the show um, that it help not only save souls, um, give people the faith, but, you know, protect, do awareness and prevention to fight child trafficking and abuse before it happens, not after we want to stop it before, That's the way to do it. And this show, especially like episode three and four that has trafficking and social media predator episode is going to change lives. And then the biggest, not the biggest thing, but uh, another jump of another level is we always need Catholic investors. We always like we're we're going into season two. We've got three more movies coming up. We just did a pro-life movie. I mean, we always would love to have additional Catholic investors that understand the mission and what we're doing. And as Catholics, we need to take over 
in this industry, we have got to be leading like we used to in media. When we lost media, we've, we've lost a lot of the culture because of it. So, hmm. Amen. And if, if a Catholic investor, there might be somebody watching right now and saying, you know, I think I am interested. How would they be, get in touch? Would it just be through your website or where is the best place? Sure. Well, they can go to the advocate TV series, um, dot com just for the show. Um, our company website is Gabriel's Messenger Ministries, or I'm sorry, the film one is Gabriel's Messenger Films.com. So that's Gabriel's plural films, Messenger Films.com. You can put it in the, can you I put, will it, put it in, in the show writing? notes? It'll okay, be I feel like everybody always messes up a, a letter or something. <laughs> no worries. It'll be but yeah, show. Gabriel's Messenger Films is a great way to contact us. You can also reach me through um, not just the website, but even on social media through Facebook. Awesome. Any final words before we end? Um, I'm just very thankful. I'll be praying for you guys um, and I'll be praying for everyone watching as well. And uh, yeah, just grateful to be here and grateful to be on the journey I just, um, I know we're going through a lot of crazy stuff in the church right now. So I hope that this message that we're doing right now can bring hope to people and encouragement, you know, to hang in there. We never know what's coming tomorrow. I know a lot of people have a difficult time at the holidays. Um, so I just want to say, you know, last year obviously was very hard Christmas and, and look now it's, it's very celebratory. And so God always has a great plan for us. Amen. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for being with us today here on Sewing Hope. It really has been a pleasure, and we'll definitely have you back. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you, Nicole. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Merry folks, Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to all of you. May God bless you and your families, and keep sowing hope into those broken hearts. Thanks for listening to this episode of Sewing Hope on Patchwork Heart Radio. For more information about this podcast and our ministries, visit our websites, Patchwork Heart dot org and andesantis.com. You can also follow and interact with us on Twitter at PWH Ministry or Andy Santis too.